Okay, we're starting to make some really good progress. This is starting to look really good. You can look at our finished product there, and it's starting to really get there. Um, all we have to do now is isolate the background so it can be pure white. That way, uh, when we put it on the wiki, uh, we won't see like the the slight gray of the background. All we'll be able to see is the the patch prominently featured, and it will be the first thing that catches our eye, and it will look great. So. Um, the best way, there's a lot of ways to do this, um, but I'm going to show you the best way, the most foolproof way um, to do it. And it's a little involved and maybe a little complicated, but I promise you it's the best way to do this. And you'll be glad you learned because this actually kind of teaches you a lot of things about Photoshop that uh, are really powerful. So um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to utilize our channels. Um, to do this. So uh, I'm going to turn off this levels layer that we just did uh, so that that doesn't affect our channels here right now. And um, what I'm going to do here is uh, look at just one channel at a time because I want to see Hello. Okay. Uh, I want to see which one has the most contrast between the border of the patch and the background of the scanner. Um, so I'm looking at the red channel, not too much contrast there. Green looks pretty good, I may use that one. And blue looks okay too. Green looks like it's going to be my best choice because I want to have, this is like light, light gray and this is sort of a darker gray. So that's what I want, this is my best choice. It's going to be different on any patch based on what colors are in the patch. So usually I just look at all three of them and see which one looks the best. In this case it's green, so I'm going to grab this and drag it down to my new channel. Um, icon there and when I let go it creates a copy of that green channel because I don't want to edit this green channel it'll make my image look really weird if I do that so I'll copy it and it basically is a new channel now so I'm going to do a levels call I can hit command L or control L on the PC or I can just go to image adjustment uh, levels and um, this looks familiar does it not this is our histogram again this time we're going to do a different uh, operation on it. I'm going to pull this down, and when I do this, it, it makes everything a lot darker. Everything past this little marker here turns to absolute black, and I'm going to do the same on the white one here. And you can see that it's making our background really white. And it's, this is actually, I'm going to push it almost as far as it will go, because I want, I want it to be almost completely black and white. In the end, I want all of this to be black, where the patch is, and all the background, I want that to be white. So I'm getting there. I can only do so much with levels though, so I'm going to hit OK, and you can see uh, what that did there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my polygonal lasso tool, which is this one here, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit because I want to get all of this. And I'm just going to start selecting, and what I want to get is all this, these white parts here. Um, and I'm being pretty careful right here because these are kind of close to the edge. And I want to only get, I want to get that, I want to still remain in that little black part there, but I want to get all these little white specks from the highlights on the uh, thread of the patch. And just go around quickly. And it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, uh, because I'm actually going to end up doing a blur on this mat a little bit. Now you can see up here I'm really kind of, I've got some room, so I'm being really, uh, I'm not really being all that careful. And so now I have selected all that interior part. And what I'm going to do is edit, fill, and I'm going to fill that with black. So now I've made some progress, and almost the entire flap is black. You can see that there's a few little things I need to address. Um, there's some little, little white dots here. They don't have to be all gone, but I usually try to get them pretty good. Just get all these dudes right here. I'm using my brush tool now with, with uh, selected with, with black uh, paint on it. And just painting these the rest of the way out. And uh, it's looking pretty good. I'm going to switch to white now. Paint there. There's a little dot right there. Those guys. This is looking really good. And I'm going to brush a tiny bit smaller so I can get that white. Switch again to black and it looks really good. There's a little dot here. Get that. Okay. 
Now we're cooking. Um, all right, so I have what I wanted. I've got it all completely black here where the flap was, and the background of the scanner is now all white. And um, I know from doing this before that to do a matte, it's actually, I need it to be the opposite of that. So um, I just need to invert this. I want to make all this black part white and all the white part black. Um, so I could pr press Command-I or Control-I on a PC, or I can just go to Image, Adjustments, um, where is it? <laughs> Oh, here it is, invert. Bam, just like that. So that's exactly what I wanted. Now, this is what we call in the um, graphics world or even in visual effects, it's called a mat. And this white part is going to be completely opaque in my image. And anything that's black will be completely transparent. And it, gradations of gray will be partially transparent. So the way that we apply this to our image is um, press down the command key control on a PC, and you see I get this little hand with a box on it. And if I take that and just click right there, it's going to make a selection out of my um, out of my mat. Now, I see, I, I see right here I've got one little speck of white uh, that I didn't notice. So I'm going just to, just to do this right, I want to do it right, uh, I'm going to uh, get black and then knock that little white dot out there. So now I'm going to select again. And there's a little tiny dot there again. Um, so, okay. There we go. All good. Now, I have that selected. Come back over to my layers palette. And this background layer, you see it's got this little lock right here. That means that I can't make it transparent. Um, but uh, the way to get rid of that is to hold down the Option key and double click. Or, if I want to, another way to do that is I can just take this background layer, uh, drag it onto my new, new layer, and then delete the one that says background. Same thing, one is just quicker than the other. So now, I still have my selection from my mat, and I just click on this uh, mat button right here, add layer mask, and voila, it's transparent. Um, now what I'm going to do, since I wanted it to be pure white, I'm going to add a solid color layer and that's black, I don't want that. I want it to be completely white, and it's on top of my, my flap now. I'll just move it down, and there you go. Perfectly white in the background. Uh, it looks really good. The only thing that, that just final adjustment here, you can see right here the edge of this shadow is a little harsh, like a little too um, sharp than it would be probably in real life. So I'm going to select my mask right here. Mat and mask are kind of two words that mean the same thing. I'm going to select this. I don't want to. I don't want to adjust this. I want to adjust this, and select here. And go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm just going to blur that mask a little bit. Now it's probably hard for you to see in this video, but look how that softened that shadow up right there. I'm going to turn this off and watch that shadow, and it'll become like a sharp line. Can you see that? It's very subtle, but it. It, it will make it'll make a difference between something that looks realistic and something that doesn't really. So I'm going to bring that blur up just a little bit to soften that shadow a little bit more, and uh, that's pretty much it. Looking really good. So um, now all I want to do is size this down. It's really big right now, straight out of my scanner. You can see just how big it is. There, there's 100%. It's really big, and while that's a beautiful image, that would take up a lot of space on the server. So uh, I'm going to save this version. Uh, right here. I already have another version that's this size. But um, I will show you in the next uh, next step how to actually save it for the web. Um, so we've got our beautiful image ready to rock and roll. We want to save it. We don't want to throw it away. But, um, but the next step is just saving for the web. That way it's a small file size that anyone can uh, view on their web page. Um, so if you have any questions, just uh, let me know, ben at scouthistory.net, and I will try to answer them as best I can. All right, thanks.